Hey, what's up? This is Nick Walter with MadeUpByPeople.com and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on UI steppers. Uh, so they're not really covered in a lot of different blogs. It's more of a kind of unique thing inside of iOS development. So I thought I'd show it a little bit of love and uh, tell you all about it. So a UI stepper is just this little two button thing that you can add to your app and either increase or decrease some amount of something. So I'll show you all different ways that you can use it. Uh, but let's go ahead and fire up Xcode and We'll make a new project and I'll kind of show you how you can do it. So here's Xcode. We'll do uh, create a new Xcode project. And we just want to do the single view application. And we don't need core data for this. Let's just leave this as universal. This is just asking, do you want an iPhone, iPad? And for language, let's have that be Swift. So we'll just call this Stepper Fun. Okay. Awesome. So we got all that. We'll hit next. And from there, I'll just put this on my desktop and hit create. So this is something I always like to do is just make sure that my app is working. Um, so I'm just gonna choose the 6S as a simulator here. Come down here and just make sure that's checked and I'm gonna hit run. Should just be an empty app with a white screen, but I always do this just to make sure things are working. And uh, we can see the simulators down here and it looks good, okay. So now let's go to our storyboard and we're gonna just put two things on here. So one is we're going to put uh, a little stepper, not the segmented control, we gotta keep going, the stepper. Okay, go put that up here. But we're also gonna put a label out here, and we won't worth work with the label right now, but uh, we will in just a little bit. So uh, here we have the stepper and the label, and the thing we wanna focus on is the stepper. So you'll notice if we just go ahead if all we do is just drag and drop it out here, we go ahead and we hit run. Um, we'll wait for the simulator to pop up. You can see, you can do, do pluses, minuses. You'll notice if you do minus enough, this is kind of grayed out, but once you hit that, then it shows up that you can do a minus. So the way that a stepper works is that you give it a minimum value and a maximum value. So um, you can say, you know, the stepper can go all the way down to zero and it can go as high up as like 50 or something like that. And each time you hit like the plus button, it goes from zero to one, then one to two. And if you hit minus, it goes from two to one and one to zero. And if it's already at zero, it won't allow you to go further than that. So if you actually select the stepper here and then over on the right side, click on this little carrot, you can see this is where you set, you know, the zero and the hundred. Uh, you can set what you want it to currently be at and you can change it so that the step um, you know, rather than going, if you click the plus going up by one, you can have it go up by a half, 0.25, like any decimal that you want, it'll go up. If you know what doubles are, um, it just, the value of the stepper is a double. So let's make it so that as we're, you know, hitting plus and minus with the stepper, that it will update this label so we can see what's going on there. So let's go to our view controller here and, uh, I guess actually we want the storyboard here and we want to do a split screen. So let me make this full screen so we can see it a little bit better. And uh, you just have to have your stepper selected here. And I'm going to do a control drag right over here. And I'm going to put it down below these two functions and I want to change this to an action. Okay, so if you can see the event value change, this means anytime someone hits a minus or a plus on the stepper, um, then this function gets called. So I'm just going to call it what it's called here. I'm going to say, uh, well, actually, let's change it. We'll call it stepper tapped. Okay. So now we have this function here. And uh, a really primitive way that we can tell what's going on is we could simply just print out whatever the value of the stepper is. The stepper has a value called print. So uh, we can go ahead and say this sender thing here. This is actually the stepper. So we can say sender dot value. Okay. And we can go ahead and print that print sender dot value. And uh, if we do this, Xcode is going to have a little bit of an issue because it's like, hey, you know, this thing's supposed to be in any object. You don't know exactly what it is. You can change this to be a UI stepper because we know for sure that's what we're getting. And uh, this will now work because we have that. So let's go ahead, ahead and hit run and just see what happens. So we'll wait for this thing to pop up. And here it is. You'll see as we hit plus down here at this console, you see as I go hit it plus, now it goes to three. If I hit minus, it goes down to two to one to zero. And once it goes to zero, I can't go past that. And if I hold this down, it will kind of do an auto thing and it speeds up quite a bit. 
and this will go all the way up to 100 and stop. Yep, you see it stops right there, and that's because of these values that we have set here, right, where we said the minimum zero, maximum's 100. So we could change this to say minimum is 30, and maximum is 40, something like that, and we can say we want you to start at 35 and step up by 0.23. Now this is just kind of a crazy example, but I just want you to, sh I want to show you how you can totally customize this. So if we go ahead and hit run here, wait for the stepper to show up again. As you see, as we move up, it went from 35 to 35.23, and as if I you know, keep putting stuff, each time it adds 0.23, and I can take it down like this. Um, so a little bit of a bizarre example, but I'm just kind of showing you how customized you can make uh, this stepper thing. You see at 40 it maxed out, and I can take it all the way back down to 30 now, okay? Cool stuff, right? So let's do the last step of connecting this label and the stepper so that when we change the stepper, it actually shows up in the label and we don't have to use this little thing down here. So let's select this label, and I'm going to make some space up here. I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and then click drag here. Okay, it's going to be an outlet, and we'll just call this the label. Okay, and I'm also going to grab this stepper out here, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, but just since we're dragging things over, I thought we'd do this, and I'm just going to call it stepper. Okay, so we connect those things. We can get rid of this did receive memory warning. Doesn't do anything, at least. Well, you can do things with it. I've yet to use it, and... Uh, I think it's a joke that Apple puts it in there every time. But anyways, now instead of doing the print, you know, we could say uh, self dot the label dot text is equal to, let's put it in these quotes. So now it's a string and then we'll pass in the value of the stepper. So we'll say self dot stepper dot value. Okay. And I'm going to change this, uh, stepper to go back to, I really like just the zero to maybe only 50 this time, uh, but I wanted to start at zero and I want it to go up by one each time we press it. So we'll go ahead and hit run here. Wait for our guy to show up and you see as we hit plus and minus, it shows exactly what it would have shown, shown down in the console. So the issue is, I don't know if you notice this, but the very first time that we ran it, it just said label, right? Like, so when the app first opens up, it doesn't show exactly what the stepper is set to. So we can fix that inside of this view did load. This is the function that gets called whenever your, uh, you know, view controller opens up or your app opens up for the first time. So, and here we'll just say self dot the label dot text is equal to, and we'll do a similar thing down here where we just insert in whatever is in self.stepper.value, okay? So that all looks good, and let's go ahead and run this. See our little thing pop up here, and you can see it starts at zero, zero, and then we add and we can subtract. So, and the reason that we just didn't set this thing equal to zero, or if we, you know, just didn't put hard code like the number zero in there is, now, if we want to change the st stepper and we'll say, yeah, the current one, it should start at like 20 or something like that. You notice we change it on the storyboard. And then when our app launches, it goes, sees, oh, okay, the stepper's at 20 and it puts it up there. So this is kind of the better way to do this rather than just saying, okay, this thing's equal to 0.0. .0. I mean, you can do that, but then you have to make sure this is the same number as whatever you put into there. So let's keep it how it was there. Last thing I just want to touch on is a little bit of customization that you can do. So here we have these behaviors for auto repeat and continuous. So this is for, um, actually I forgot what the difference for the two is, a great way to ever figure out how to use like a control or something. Here we have this UI stepper. If I hold down command and click on it, this kind of goes to the Apple uh, documentation here and we can see continuous. If yes, value changes events are sent any time the value changes during the interaction. Okay, so we'd probably always want to keep that to yes. Auto repeat. If yes, press and hold repeatedly alters the value. So that's the one where if you click hold, you know it kind of speeds up and does the thing. So you notice on this guy, if we take auto repeat off and then we run this app, da, 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 da. you can see if I press and hold this, it just only goes up one time, right? Whereas before when I was pressing and holding, it would go up like all the way up to the top. So there you go. You have it, UI Stepper. Um, 
doesn't get a lot of love other places, so I thought I'd show it some love. Again, my name is Nick Walter from madeupbypeople.com. Come over there if you'd like to join my mailing list and get all sorts of tips and tricks for iOS programming. Thanks, and have a great day.